unless you've got mega money, um, it's difficult, dude. It's so hard. And um, this space, if it wasn't for if it wasn't for the pandemic, if it wasn't for for uh, for what what happened and what governments chose to do, this space just wouldn't be anywhere near what it is now. Like the whole Doge thing exploded during during COVID because. Um, because Americans were given were given money, were given handouts because of, of the work. So everyone got a stimulus check, and anyone that that didn't need to spend it to survive basically bought Dogecoin with it and and made a huge amount of money and ploughed a load of it back into this space. Um, and, and yeah, so this space developed hugely because of COVID. And then like people like you who've changed their whole career progression essentially or career direction um yeah it's um it's fascinating like anyway I'm, I'm getting kind of lost in the bigger picture of that now and the i guess the social kind of questions that come alongside it yeah i mean you know we everyone's i i feel like everyone's been scrabbling in this space because nobody really knows nobody has, really has any direction because it's difficult to know which direction everything's going in you know you've got you've got a lot of conflict you've got a lot of people being persuaded that nfts are a scam still you you still the mainstream media still don't fully understand it i mean come on like i i wrote i sent an email to the local paper right who support what i do they support my creative endeavors they always have and to tell them that I've been working with, you know, with Jack and Rainbow and Anastasia, Teresa and, and Rosewolf on Squibblets, I was telling them, you know, it's this really cool collaborative project where we've created all this artwork together and we're selling them and it's all, all the profits are split equally and it's supporting young artists because it's really important to do that. And they wouldn't run the story. The editor said it sounds like NFTs. And I'm like, well, it, it is NFTs. And and the public don't trust that. And I was like, I, I don't recall ever, ever having a response from a, a newspaper saying they, they're not prepared to run a story. I found it really strange. <laughs> I've never experienced that before. Really odd. I mean, the the press coverage, I mean, I'll take you back to November and sort of sales in this market as well. And, and this is why. So it was only the big, so the NFT volume doubled from October to November in terms of NFT sales to, you know, from about 480 million US dollars in the month to, I think it's about 960, just under or just over. Um, so a billion dollars, which is a huge wow. amount of money. Um, but it's a negligible amount of money in terms of the total amount of money in crypto, which is about $1.5 trillion at the time. Wow. Um, the, the point of those NFT sales that have gone up in price is the average transaction price doubled. The number of transactions didn't double. So the average transaction price went from about $200 to about $400. And it was just the apes, the punks, the pudgy penguins, um, you know, the Azukis, um, the big, branded collections and big named artists really that were that were selling and that's the problem all of the cool things that are happening out here all of the ways to actually use the smart the blockchain technology um, and what nfts give us an access point to that technology um, the use cases and aren't put in front of people so all they see is this money churning circle basically um, and, it, and it is what we are. We know this. 90% of this market is that. It's, we're just part of the other 10% trying to make it something more. And, and I fundamentally believe that will happen. I just just don't think it happens anytime soon. No. Well, you know, what's the rush, really? I think people panic, don't they? They, they? they see an opportunity to make loads of money, and then in their mind they go, oh, I haven't got enough money. I'll do this and do that to make some more money. And a lot of people succeed in that. But then what? <laughs> then what? People invest it all back into other into other stuff. Most people who are rich in the inverted commas or welfare through crypto just hold it in crypto, don't they? That's most people. They're not converting it into like real world dollars, really. They're just holding it, and then that's that's the risk. Of, that's the risk. 
real well, the, the, the sensible people are converting enough of it into real world money so that they've got enough assets to cover their real world expenditure um or they've got enough direct income um you know from from businesses that work in in web 2 or whatever um and then yeah they, they, they're keeping the rest essentially in bitcoin and ethereum at the moment they're not even really playing with any of the other tokens unless they fundamentally believe in the in the teams the network the builds yeah yeah so it's something i've not fully been like totally part of crypto you know i know i know you know in regards to investing and, and watching it and stuff i've got a friend who absolutely spent all his time doing it whereas me i've just like okay well, it's, you know for me it's like almost like selling product because i because i've entered the space as a children's brand I want to provide NFTs and things like that, that that kind of do something usually, like you get something with it or it's able to use it in the future, whatever that is. No idea, but no one knows either. And and I, and I want to make sure that those NFTs exist at least so they can be used for something in the future because I know, I can see where it's all heading. I can see where it's all heading, particularly for kids because it's well good fun. You know, and I like having fun, and that's the whole reason that I wanted to do something in this space. You know, I mean, it started with tiger paws. It started with tiger paws. Every single person who got a tiger paws got a, got a coloring book or a copy of tiger paws or scribbles too. They got scribbles, scribbles too, copy of tiger paws. Because I didn't feel I could I could justify charging a large amount of money, particularly in ETH, and the person get nothing other than just the NFT. It just didn't make sense to me that. So I'm like, what kind of, how, you know, how could you say, okay, so you bought an NFT, you also get merchandise, so you also get a colouring book, you also get a reading book, you also get, you know, a writing journal, whatever it is. I mean, I didn't have any T-shirts to give out at the time, but that will come, like stickers and stuff like that. The mumsels are giving stickers away. Uh, I think that's great. They've got the merch stuff, but... Pretty sure, pretty sure they're at a loss there. Um, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure that, that, that like that's coming out of their own pocket. I think, which is fine. You know, if, if there's a business investment into the people that are buying your product, fair enough. It's not the best business model. It's not very sustainable. So I wanted to think of, you know, a more sustainable way. And for me, it's yeah. You buy an expensive NFT, you get something physical with it. That's okay because you've kind of bought something. And I had to send them out direct as well. You've kind of got something to hold on to there. And if you do want to sell the NFT in future, because the Squibbles is like a multi-billion pound children's network or fantastically successful TV show, which it will be, then your NFT goes up in value. But there's no... You can't predict the time on that, can you? No, and and you shouldn't be talking about a product or a service um, that you're offering now going up in value over time like that because then it's not necessarily a product or a service. It's it's an investment, and and they are different things. And I, I you know, I, I don't think we've quite worked that out as a space yet. Like, what is a product or a service, and and what is what are we encouraging as a potential future investment? Um, it's it's funny. I, t- I tweeted this morning. I, I'm, I'm going slightly off topic, Joe. I could talk about the stuff you're chatting about all day long and often do. Um, but like one of my big issues um, is is the things that we've got to do once we've already bought something. Like, uh, why do I have to claim stuff? Like, you sold me something. I bought it. I've now got to jump through hoops. It doesn't make sense. Um, and like the example I used to someone who was like, I'm a little bit confused is like if. Can you imagine paying for a year's subscription to Netflix and then having to go somewhere to claim it so that you got access to it every month? Like, mm-hmm. is that is that a thing that would even happen? Like, you know, like why have I got to unstake? You want me to stake your NFTs for whatever <laughs> yeah, reason, and you reward amazing. me for that, but I don't get the airdrop if they're staked. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to release a second collection, and all of the holders from our first collection are entitled to some, but you've got to come and claim it on a form. Why? Why? They they crowdfunded you. Why aren't you giving them the benefits? It's all on chain. All the data's there. Why are you making them claim that? It's I mean we need to get past this. It's frustrating as hell for me. I think it's something very different that 
like the pro the problem with that, and especially with the terminology that's used and the language that's used and everything, is it it, it creates a gated, closed off community, doesn't it? You know, it it stops people from coming in and going. Oh, this looks exciting and really simple to do. It's like, well, it's not simple at all, is it? It's really overly complicated. But it could be simple. That's the thing, because <laughs> all of the information and data is there. Like, it's all on chain. Yeah, it it could be absolutely simple. Yeah, but people just don't like simplicity for some reason. People like to make things really complicated. And, well, if you annoying. if you if you ask me, it's profiteering. Like that's what it comes down to, because the ones that aren't claimed can then be sold. Yeah, this is true. But I mean, like when I said things go up in value, I, di I didn't mean because that's what the intention is. I just meant from a collectible point of view. Uh, oh, one hundred percent. Look yeah. at some of the stuff from the mid nineties that you could buy just as a toy. Look at Beanie Babies. Yeah, like Beanie Babies were never an investment. They were never sold as an investment. No. No, but you know, time. Uh, we've never experienced having digital collectibles before. We've, we've experienced physical collectibles, but like in theory, physical collectibles can perish unless they're looked after. Um, digital collectibles don't, do they? So unless the blockchain on, somehow disappears, I don't know how that would happen. Is that possible? Only only if electricity disappears. Yeah, so we have a solar flare or whatever, and, you know, everything goes down, then, then we've got a problem, but... Um, no, I mean blockchain networks networks can can stop running. So like Ethereum and things like Polygon, they could they could get themselves to a position where there was no incentive for people to validate the transactions on the nodes. Um, and that's what the gas fee is, right? That's what we pay on on all networks. It's it's to to cover that incentive to get people to process the transactions, basically. So yeah, um, yeah that's that's the only real way it could happen is if the if there was no reward structure or people didn't want to validate transactions, then the decentralised nature of the network fails. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. This has been really, really insightful and <laughs> a really unexpected, uh, unexpected conversation, and I love that. I love spontaneity. You know me, Dave. If it's spontaneous, it's the best because it's just exciting and, and we talk about things that were un unexpected um, and I appreciate that so thank you Dave thank you Jack as well for popping in and helping with this I've recorded this I'll probably post it it's about 13 minutes long though so I don't know but we'll see and um, <laughs> I've got spaces tomorrow so I've got a prop we've got a proper spaces tomorrow that's going to be streaming we're going to have art prompts there's going to be videos and all sorts so if you've got any suggestions for things you'd like to see or if you've got any artwork that you'd like me to put in the stream, please send it. Um, I've got a few ideas on on how to put artwork on in real time. So my idea is to use um, Framer, because on Framer you can create rolling slideshows, yeah? But what you can do is if when you update the gallery, if you will, you can kind of, a sliding uh, uh, automatic uh, scrolling gallery in Framer. You just basically add a new image and then it'll add it into the sliding gallery, which is really smart. But you can add web sources onto a stream. So I'm thinking of maybe using that to have a more of a real-time, updatable, easily manageable slideshow gallery some, somewhere, maybe at the bottom of the screen or somewhere like that. Have you role. have you played with OnCyber recently? Do you know what? I haven't. No. Is is that they've, they've you... had they've had drastic updates. Like okay. apparently the whole process is so much easier than than it was because they came they they started pushing in this industry at the same time as Spatial, mm -hmm. and I I got annoyed with with their functionality <laughs> basically mm -hmm. and stopped using them. But lots of people have started using them again towards the back end of last year and. Um, I don't know. I haven't. I, I can tell you, but it might be worth a quick look and seeing how easy it is to to just put a gallery up there. Yeah, because that's permanent then. I've actually got a question, guys, about uh, like when the blockchains do go down, like like when voice went down, Jay. So like every all that art disappears. 
So, so what do you do with it? Do you remint it? Do you try to find the original owner? Like <laughs> some, of, some of Jack's like coolest stuff was there. So we're kind of confused on like what we should do now that that art doesn't like exist on the blockchain anymore. It was up to the user to transfer it to the wallet, wasn't it? Even though Voice actually never had the option to do that, despite numerous contact. You know, they, they, some of them were able to transfer. We tried to move some, and some went over, and some didn't, and it was not an easy process. But, uh, yeah, with most of the stuff that we, it was, if you created it, you couldn't move it over. You could only move over the stuff that you had purchased. So it's, uh, I know our stuff didn't get moved over, so it like vanished. So we're we don't know what to do with it now because you know do, do we sell it again? It's you know it's uh, we're a little confused yeah. on what we should be doing with it. Mint it again. If people have a problem with it, that's that's tough because it, that's that's a voice thing, and it? it's not you know it's not you. I, I don't worry about it. The, the, you know, to be honest, I feel that people in this space they set all these weird little fussy standards where you can't mint the same thing on two blockchains i understand why but it, it's not a rule you know what i mean and if and if it if it disappears off one place then you just mint it again you know and, and it's not your fault it's whoever is hosting the you know the file it's, it's that's their fault not your fault you should, no one should ever feel bad for a big company going under you know you shouldn't you, you're the artist at the end of the day you're providing the artwork for the people and if and if the blockchain that they're on goes down you just mint it somewhere else it's just just the way it goes it was it was more for the collector as opposed to anything else like because they had paid money and bought it but i guess they could have also moved it over at the same time if they wanted to keep it absolutely so that's, that's 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 where i was you could yeah. also you could also reach out to them if you know them and ask them if they want it on Polygon or Tez, you know, something where it wouldn't yeah. cost you very much to do it. Yeah, that way you could just airdrop them a new piece or something as well, and then they've still got it, but they didn't have to pay anything else. But if it's a collector you don't know, then it's their responsibility ultimately. They could get in touch with you. You know, they should get in touch with the platform that went down and claim compensation, but whatever happens it's not it's not on you the onus is not on you well that makes me feel a little better we're just it's like it's weird you know like situations like that how to handle it so that's uh that's really helpful i, I think just being open is the best way to handle it i really do i don't think there's a right or a wrong way i don't and the standards that have been set have been set to stop to, to essentially stop someone who sold art for five thousand dollars recreating it on a different chain that's the that's the reason the standard was set by the people who've been buying that art at five thousand dollars and as an example um i think you know nico and caden are a really good example with like little hands being across sort of 10 11 12 different chains um in in ways where you can do this and it's not copies of the same art it's parts of the same collection split yeah. out so yeah there's definitely ways guys definitely ways yeah i think minting pieces from a collection over different blockchains is fine it's minting the same piece over different blockchains is not cool but it's okay if one of those places doesn't exist anymore that's totally fine i would say 100 percent. i won't worry about it at all i'll just keep just keep going keep making stuff keep being bright keep smiling through it right guys um i'm gonna i'm gonna go now so take care have a lovely afternoon have a, have a lovely rest of day and maybe see you tomorrow for spaces so it's 12 p.m gmt 7 a.m est and until then fairly well